You're watching the Eternal Tournament Series. And we are back for Season 2, Week 4 of the Eternal Tournament Series. I, of course, am Mark, a.k.a. I R Chibi Kawhi, in the booth with me. I've got Ilion. Ilion, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, what do you think about these matchups right now? What do we what do we got on deck? What matchups do we? Oh, you're passing that to me. That's fine. Okay, I see how it is. <laughs> I can pass it back to you. We, we've we've got, got... <laughs> no, no, no. You gave this to me. I gave, I gave it back to you. I thought this you, was an interesting you one. You did. We about yes. It. So we've got Kamado versus Hulkbuster. So two very well known names in the ETS. So it's first off, exciting to have top quality players in this matchup. Uh, and the, the decks, we've got Kamado on Chalice, you know, eh, the, but then we got Hulkbuster on Combray Aggro and this, wait, wait, what? I, I just want to interrupt that sound. So that sounds like, oh, okay. Well, like two typical decks, but oh. this is not your normal Combray Aggro list, right? No. Yeah. Because we were just talking about this. This is actually very reminiscent of the old, old, old school Combray Aggro list. We've got, we've got two infinite hourglasses we got four initiate of the sands we got four lucky prospectors we got four oath books uh let's see what else four reliquary raiders we have no seraphs we have no unseen commandos we have no sandstorm titans uh we've got yeah four praxis displacers four <laughs> xenon obelisks this is just an exciting day. only two main deck a silence effects in Valkyrie Enforcers. We have the four stand again. I don't know. I'm excited. I think it, this is going to be a lot of fun to watch. It's insane. I played I played Combra Egger for a while, and it's like the Combra Egger list that I'm used to, the more recent ones, like there's very little in common with this list here. Like that for creatures, you basically you have Crown Watches, Awaken Student, Initiate, and like I, the Valkyrie Enforcers sometimes were in there, and Orc Record Keepers were sometimes in there, and that's it. Like everything else is different. You've yeah. got Lucky Prospectors. Like, love it. I, I love like it. you even had to ask <laughs> somebody in the Discord even said, "Wait, what's lo Lucky Prospector?" We didn't oh, no, I'll, 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 I'll admit to it. Was. Yeah, I had no idea what the fuck Lucky <laughs> or what what Lucky Prospector was. Uh, I was very confused on what that card did. I had to look it up. Glad I did though. I did, well, it has because... no, it has no weapons. There's not a single weapon in this Combra Edgar list. No, but like we see in their opening hand, uh, Infinite Hourglass sitting right there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, we're be... sitting there on a whole bunch of relics instead. So no weapons, but a bunch of relics. I, I'm excited. Strange list. I, I like the idea of this for sure. And yeah. then on Kamado's side, we just got plain old boring challenge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it's. I think it's going to be interesting. Like, given the matchup and looking at Kamado's initial uh, seven, I'm I'm not going to lie. I'm a little tempted to keep this hand because it's got three Combra healers in it. I would definitely throw this back. I, I actually really, really? Like despite my joke, I, I really like Chalice. No, you got to throw this back. You can't play any of their Combra healers. No, you but you just, you, you've got two draws. You got, you, you uh, just got to live, live, you live on the risky side. No, I don't know. Ilya, come join me. Come join no, me, Ilya. Oh that, that's the dark Look, side. I can't you, do you, it. You only have one power in your hand. The odds of you drawing power are almost infinite, right? <laughs> that's how that works. <laughs> almost in, that's that's um, math. Just basic pl one plus one equals infinite. There you go. Boom. Got him. Yeah. yeah. I, that's, you, you know what I'm saying. Kamado I, I, now I, just going to be able to play some Temple Scribes. Jeez. Actually, yeah, now definitely going to be able to play some Temple Scribes. Not on their yeah. turn two, though, because they have to fire off the Seek Power. Now look, they and they drew... first. That's true, but they also yeah. drew Seat of uh, seat of Order for their first draw. Had they kept oh. that opener hand, they would have been able to play uh, no, no, three no, Combray that's, Healers. That's not how that works. That's not how that works. I, I just call it like I see it, you know? I, yeah. I, will, I will call you out on that. That's not how that works. It doesn't work that way. You can't just yeah. say that. Nice. Uh, so we're gonna get down. Uh, I like the chalice draw here. That was a oh yeah, sick very very good. Uh, and and that's always the problem with chalice is just getting mm -hmm. to your chalice is fast enough, and we get the value right away with this one. 
Yeah, and it was a little unfortunate for Hulkbuster since they did not play that their comp, their uh, seat in turn one, and they instead played the Initiative Sands. They didn't have that Justice Sigil to play the Awakened Student, so they had to play the seat first and then play the Awakened Student, which made Awakened Student just a two-two coming in. They missed the land drop for the turn. However, played Temple Scribe got a power off the top. Awakened Student now a three-three smacking in. We also have the Lucky Prospector coming in. And we got that infinite hourglass in Hulkbuster's hand. That's going to be a 3-3. The board is getting pretty intense. Yeah, and you know that you're not facing down any hailstorms because they're mm -hmm. all on the sideboard. So you can just flood out the board and try and smash face as quickly as possible here. Yeah. Oh, wow, the stand together. Yep. I, I, you, yeah, oh, like, you missed that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wasn't even. I just wasn't even thinking about it. I, stand together is just so bonkers. It's really oh, yeah. the reason why Combray Aggro is a deck list, and I, that's just basically the game at this point. Hey, even with a harsh rule top deck, like there's nothing that Komodo can actually do about that. Well, there's the harsh rule, and there's also an, a second chalice. These are all things that Komodo wants to see. That just a little too slow. Well, just a little. Just not not quite getting there. <laughs> Yeah, you're going down to like you're going down to three here, and then yeah, there we yeah, go. We're there, just there's see the scoop. literally nothing you can do because you probably no. also if you're Hulkbuster, I think you throw out the record keeper too. Yeah, yeah, probably because he, like you know that you're not facing down anything that's really going to be a problem. Uh, no. They don't have the option to do anything but like a double hailstorm, which I mean, if they do that, I, you're probably okay. It's not going to kill either of your four fours. It kills your orc record keeper, but then you can use it to pump something. Exactly, and that's there's like, really not much for options there. Yeah, and you know that there's no double hailstorm anyways because that's all in the sideboard. Speaking of sideboarding, uh, hailstorm probably is coming in. I'm imagining we're going to see four of those right away. Seems seems loose. Seems loose. Seems loose. You wouldn't put in hailstorms. No, I want Oak Buster to win. You're <laughs> okay. I was like, what are you talking about? You, uh, you definitely put in all... I, I think that you definitely oh, for sure. slam in as many hailstones as you can just to try and stop them from being over to be, being able to overwhelm you that same way. Yeah, that's just I, rough. I definitely agree. The one downside to Hailstorm, though, is if Oathbook does get online or the stand togethers do get online, you can. A lot of the creatures, a lot of the the units do have three toughness already, so they can get outside of that Hailstorm range pretty quickly. That being said, I definitely yeah, yeah. a it's sane person ideal. is bringing it in. Yeah, yeah, like, it's, it's not it's not ideal by any means. But one of the advantages of Hailstorm is, uh, like I was saying, there is that you can use it to pop an entire stand together, which is nice. So it's a little bit of a cheaper way to pop a stand mm -hmm. together and then go oh, into a harsh sure. rule after that. So you you yes. have it's a it's not the ideal choice, but it's something that you just kind of have to accept that you're going to need to do. It's, it's not the choice you want; it's the choice you need, right? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> You know, this Eye of Winter actually looks kind of bad here, too, because you're looking at so like double infinite hourglass to keep yeah. it in if you're. Well, double Hulk double Buster? infinite hourglass. Lucky Prospector already has endurance there. Crown Watch Paladin already has natural uh, Aegis on there. You have to imagine these Crown or these. Copper Hall elites are coming in over these Vanquishes. I don't. I don't. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like. Then uh, maybe the Valkyrie Enforcers as well, just getting a little flying action. I don't know what you're cutting for the Valkyrie Enforcers, though, because I do think Oath, I think Paladin Oathbook is pretty good here. Just yeah, being able to like, keep the Paladin Oathbook. Yeah. Yeah. I'd agree with that. You, you get uh, incremental value against things like you said, like a hailstorm, or if they have a uh, harsh rule, you don't have to flood the board with as many mm -hmm. things. You can make one single thing more of a threat and yeah. be less worried about running into a harsh rule and overcommitting to so the board. I might, I might trim the displacers down to two to get the other two enforcers just to get a slightly earlier threat that also is flying. And of course, Chalice has a little bit of a harder time against flyers and that praxis displayer because of a lot of the enter the battle or and like enter play effects that kamado has might not be as good as you'd like it to you yeah don't, you don't want to gain a life in a card draw yeah yeah no i think that you you could definitely even chop down honestly you might just be able to chop out all of the praxis displacers i, I wouldn't be surprised if you do that because you're looking at a, a deck like if you're looking at chalice desert marshal temple scribe amber acolyte combray healer Lumen Defender, even Shelterwing Rider, like it pops Aegis, but if it doesn't Ooh. have it, like if yeah. they, if you pop Aegis against Shelterwing Rider, then it just gets great for uh, holding a bunch of uh, pluses mm -hmm. from a Chalice. Like 
it's not a, a wonderful position to be in. There's really not no. a lot of things that you can pump out. So I Definitely. don't think you see a lot of uh, Praxis Displacers staying in here. No, but our players are underway. Hulkbuster w had a sweet turn to Reliquary Raider. Wow! Kamado has a Desert Marshal, decides to silence the initiative stance that Hulkbuster played on turn one, allowing this Reliquary Raider to draw a card and get in. This is... Yeah. I, I don't know how I feel about that, but, you know, uh, Kamado, very good player, must have a reason in mind for this. There's a stand oh, together, no. though! Oh, that's so wow. backbreaking here. And you oh, see the, the hailstorm, hail but it's too late! The hailstorm's not going to be able to get it. It, it can attack in, and it has to trade here, but, I mean, the Reliquary oh, has already gotten so and much. Then, oh, no! Another stand together off the top! Do you walk like they're gonna pallet an oathbook first? Okay. Like, oh, okay. All right. Either like, way, they, yeah, you were. I, I would you, almost have been tempted to to try and get the double block though, right? Yes. Oh, I a hundred percent would have. I think that like you just swing out with both. You have a silenced initiative of the sands. If that dies, that's perfectly fine. Ooh, vision, vision. of austerity though coming in from the board for Kamado will be able to take care of that oathbook if they so want to. Yeah, I mean, right now we don't have any way to deal with that Shelter Wing Rider, so we've kind of got the the Reliquary Raider here can be killed with a triple block. Yeah, so is wonder, that, we're not going to see that, it that good, it. though? Well, I mean, obviously Hulkbuster thinks that it's not acceptable because they're not attacking in here. And I, I mean, I think that it's pretty good. You want to keep mm -hmm. that Reliquary Raider alive if you can. It's got the stand together on it. That just seems really important. Do you yeah, attack guess, with the Reinarch? And I think so. There's no double. Uh, even if there is a double, I think that's fine because you get rid of one of these flying 5-5s. Five that way, yeah, because you're going to get a... Ooh, I like this. Ooh, attack with both. And yeah. hitting another Initiate. Wow, so we are going to see gonna be... the double block on both of them, and stand together mm -hmm. is going to be excellent. Oh wow! They are, uh, so Kamado is going to be still left with the Sheltering Rider, even if this goes through. But I think you yes. have to fire off the stand together no matter what here, because yeah, it just sets you up for absolutely. such a strong board presence after this. The five-five Sheltering Rider is going to be able to continuously eat things though, so that's a little bit of an issue. But mm -hmm. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not hating this. Yeah, you don't have anything large enough to get through this Shelter Wing Rider, so you've got to try and find something fairly soon. Double Shelter Wing Rider is pretty tough here. Just, just slam this Vision of Austerity now? Nope. No, nope. Still going to let that Pallet and Oathbook stick around. I'm not Which, sure how much I feel about that. Like, I, I, I'm fine with it. You have this 5-5 five five that's blocking anything. Like Nothing that, you're, that Hulkbuster is going to attack with is, and, get, and that would get that trigger is going to be able to get through the Sheltering Rider. You know that the only things more than likely that are going to pop the Aegis are the Desert Marshals, and you're not even 100% sure that Hulkbuster brought in those Desert Marshals because they've already... They had already... Okay, so they haven't played a Valkyrie Enforcer, so you have to worry about that, but like I don't know. That's so minimum. That's fair. I, well, I'd just be worried that that's like the one way that you can lose from this position at that point, right? Like, is sure. It, if they manage to pop it and get a 4 3 and then just start powering oh, it out man. and going over, then you're going to go lose. Kamado so has the double vanquish in order to yeah. get rid of the Copper Hall Elite, which was the one way that Hulkbuster could start forcing through on this board. Uh, yeah, Hulkbuster really needs to find some way to silence this 5 5, and it's not looking good. A Xenon Obelisk would be excellent yes, right now. Yes, it would. That's Hulkbuster. probably the number one draw. Ooh. I don't know if I like playing out the Awakened Student here. Yeah. Because like, you're I, not doing anything next turn, even if you do draw power with it. Wow. Okay. Well, GG. Right? Hailstorm well, next. Oh, no, if a, no, if no, a power no, is drawn. Hailstorm. No, you don't Hailstorm here. Or, or, you don't, I mean, you don't. I, you oh, don't yeah, because, your, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're, 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 right. Right. you're right. You're already I'm, just yeah. stopping everything. I'm a crazy person. Don't and I mean, me. yeah, with the, all of the Aegis units, I don't, I don't think that that's where you want to be. Really, what Kamado needs to do is needs to, they need to draw a Chalice. Yeah. Like at this yeah. point, it's kind of who draws their four drop relic first. If Hulkbuster gets to a Xenon Obelisk before Kamado gets to a Chalice, this could uh, really another, turn around another, fast. Another stand together is fine too, because then you can start swinging in with the Crown Watch Paladin, right? That's yeah. I mean, you, you'd oh. be able to block that with enough though. All right, they are going to set up for just harsh ruling the board. 
It makes a lot of sense. Uh, I I don't know. I'd almost wait until I got yeah. the the chalice, you... but oh wow! Oh no! I think you just play it here right now, right? Just in case and you get. Oh, yeah. but there's no unseals that's gonna that are gonna be coming in from the chalice deck here. There's backlash. That's a possibility. You gotta decide whether or not you think that that would actually happen here. I, yeah. I, I, I like going ahead and playing it out because, yeah, it lets yes. you swing in with this Crown Watch Paladin. They're either going to be... Well, I guess they can double block with their Combray Healer and their Acolyte. Yeah, that's what you do here, I think. I, I, I imagine that's the line that Kamado will go with. You've got to keep the 5-5 yeah. five, five alive as for as long as possible. I, I still don't hate this, though, because you are getting a Warcry on top of... For whatever units on top of the deck. And if your opponent draws Chalice, this is, like, that's one less unit that they can Chalice, especially since you're not popping the Aegis on the Sheltering Rider. Yeah, absolutely. You've also got to think that there, there's a reason why they went with... Uh, there, there's a reason why they went with the uh, Hailstorm mm -hmm. there, and it was to set up something like a Harsh Rule. So you've got yeah. to think that that's going to be happening soon. And there's the initiative saying that it's now a 5-5, five, five, but if I'm Kamado, I think I just take... Oh. Setting... Oh, okay. Ooh. Going yeah, for well, Hailstorm into Harsh Rule is what... Yeah, Hailstorm into Harsh Rule still cleans everything up, so it makes sense. I could see taking the damage, but I can also see this line for sure. I mean, we're looking at a handful of cards for Kamado versus just yeah. nothing from Hulkbuster. So, I... Like, there's ways for Hulkbuster to top out of this, but Kamado's draws have got to be more live. Uh, well, it's a, ooh, that's right. a pretty good one. Yeah, but there is harsh another... Rule this? I, think you, I think you harsh rule it, especially with that Combray Healer being drawn. You harsh rule it, play the Combray Healer, and then just go yolo lo 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 Uh, Or not. No, they're going to take some damage here. Now you get the option to like either Desert Marshal the 4 4 or Combra Healer it if Hulkbuster decides to play it, which I don't I mean, think I, you play I, it. Oh, I, yeah, I don't like playing that. Do not like playing that. Make them answer my one threat that I already have on the board before I play another threat, especially one that's going to be continuing. It's a, still a three turn clock. Uh, yeah, one at a I time like seems like yeah. the way to go against the yeah. control deck like a Chalice deck. Yeah. Uh, well, you know. Hulkbuster still has the option, like, because Kamado's not doing much. There's a still slow. Not. That doesn't do anything right now, though. Pops no. the Aegis, but, like, uh. I don't think you really care too much about that. Yeah, uh, it's not like, you, you're not actually running disjunctions to kill Chalice, so there's not really any, oh, and speaking of Chalice, here we go. Yeah. Oof. So what do yeah. what do you think Kamado is waiting on the Vision of Austerity for? Just waiting until they can hit like a Xenon Obelisk? Yeah, I think I think they care more about Xenon Obelisk than anything else, and which I think is completely fair. So now this is going to be a four four. Desert Marshal comes down, silences it, it makes, makes it, it a two two, two, two and, and trades then they can trade. And then next, like so, even now with the uh, yeah the Waken Student coming out, being buffed up to a three three, this Channel of the Tempest can still answer it this turn. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and Kamado's just in the regular zone that you see Chalice operating in, which is just an unstoppable value. Yep. Yeah, and Hulk there Hulk it up. <laughs> done. Yep. Makes perfect sense. I can absolutely understand just scooping that one. You're not really going to be able to come back against Chalice there. No. Yeah, a few, a few lines that I think could have gone a little bit differently. Again, the biggest one being... Um, that Reinarch and then playing the Copper Hall Elite. I also really don't know how I like how I feel about slow in the matchup. Yeah. Like it's great if you hit Chalice or temp or like channel or like Chalice early or channel late, but the odds of them leaving a channel in hand late for you to hit it seems less than reasonable. Yeah, it, it's really just to slow down the chalice, I would think. And that's that's a risky line, right? Like, you have to get it right away, and it's only for the one card. It is the card that you care about the most. It's the card that Kamado cares about the most, but that's a tough one to actually hit on time, right? You, you have yeah, to both I, draw your bat... You have to draw your slow... Yeah, you have to draw your slow right away, and you have to hope that they actually have it in hand and that it matters, because and everything else, they, they don't care. Like, I mean... If you're going to slow down, like yeah. we saw there, like you slow a Combray <laughs> healer, that's not exactly ideal. Yeah, and, and again, like I hate to I hate to sound like a broken record, but or at least in this matchup, Disjunction would be strictly better than slow. Yeah, it gets, Disjunction it, just... Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
once again, we're just seeing that, like you said, like Disjunction seems like it would be a really key card for a lot of these decks, and we haven't really seen it yet. Disjunction surprisingly absent, uh, absent from both lists, honestly. I mean, Vision Austerity for uh, for the Chalice list, but no Disjunctions for either one. Yeah, I like I I feel like their uh, Disjunction's ability to get a relic back from the yard is very underrated. Well, and for both of these decks, they're playing a lot of different relics, so it would exactly. make a lot of sense to have it. But we're we're just not seeing it. Just taking a little bit of a nap this week. It's 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 all right. Ooh, Hulkbuster with a turn three reliquary raider. Kamado though does have the desert marshal, going to be able to answer it, but that's still a one three. And gets the hailstorm to kind of clean up the board if necessary. Although Hulkbuster does have that stand together waiting in the wings. This could be. Yeah, we're going to see some interesting things. I imagine mm. that we're. Do you hold up the stand together here, or do you try and play a Paladin's Oath book? Uh, I guess oh, you just well, run out the stand together. That's the you, answer. Yeah, there, we have it answered. There you go. You you run the stand together and slam it. I actually yeah. really like that play. I, I think mm -hmm. that you a lot of people will try and like bait out things with stand together, but it's easy to tell when somebody's doing that. Exactly. And, you can run into backlash, right? Like, Oops. you don't need to do that. So we could see a double block here. Yeah, I think you have I, to. Yeah, I'm, I'm, but I'm so okay with that. Like, I would. Oh I'd yeah, take no, I'd that be trade. Happy for Hulkbuster. Yeah, but at the same time, like, you kind of have to as Kamado because you can't mm -hmm. let it get bigger. You can't let it be a seven-seven. And I was just about to say, yeah, I think you have to. You're forcing the hailstorm to get rid of that reliquary raider because if you give that reliquary raider one turn, your hailstorms are useless. Yes, yeah, exactly. And it gets so oh much value so fast. Hulk and there's Buster a copper really coming out of the gates here. Yeah, it, this is going to be a tough game for Kamado to come back from right now. Uh, well, actually, so what? Uh, copper Hall Elite is going to trade off with this Shelter Wing Rider. And then there's another Shelter Wing Rider in hand. So Kamado is going to be able to do that. But the slow, slow. going to make the, the second one an eight cost. Yeah, but maybe, yeah maybe. it's not going to be doing a whole lot for a while. I've got to imagine that it's hitting Shelter Wing. It, it doesn't make sense for it to hit anything else. It's got to, right? It's got to. Because then you make the trade even awkward. I actually, I might have actually liked to see Copper Hall Elite attack first in order to really bait the trade and then fire off slow in order to answer whatever answers that they would have to the rest of the board. I, I like seeing, I like knowing what they have first. I, I, I really like knowing, like the, the information is so key yeah, before but you they're, attack. They're, ta they're, tapped, they're tapped out. So like, you know, you don't have to worry about anything at like fast spell speed. Yeah. Is like, is the only reason why I, I like doing it the other way, because like, you know, you're only attacking with like, there's no other attack that turn other than mm -hmm. attacking with Copper Hall Elite. Well, and now we see that yeah. Vision of Austerity. This time it's going to destroy the Paladin's Oath book. Really now it's just, like, does Stand Together or Harsh Rule come down first, right? Yeah, well, I mean, this, this Combray Healer is going to be able to gum up a little bit of the board. The Combray Healer into the Vanquish. Very big for Kamado. Yeah, Vanquish was a sick draw here. Because I was thinking the Grind Arc was going to be an issue if they have Combray Healer, but... That Vanquish totally nullifies that. Ooh, there's a power off the top. That's going to be a 4-4 Awakened Student. So you're going to see this 2-4 Reliquary Raider and the 4-4 Awakened Student just getting in. Awakened Student gets chump blocked, but Kamado's down to 11. Hulkbuster's still sitting pretty at 26. Yeah, 11. I mean, it's still giving Kamado six turns Ooh. here. Yeah, and there we go. Chalice is starting to get into its element where it, it, it's just draws are going to be fantastic. It's got a lot of really big swingy cards. So we're going to see one of them come down here in a minute. Yeah. We could see Stand Together off the top, though. For That's Bolt true. Buster. Instead, That's true. we saw a power. <laughs> Which, so, yeah. yeah. Combra it lets Healers. them swing in, but unfortunately. Yeah. It's still only taking two. Kamado going to drop down to nine here. Chumps with the Combra Healer. Harsh rule from Kamado on this next turn. Going to clean everything up. And there is the eighth power for this Shell's Wing Rider. Uh, Kamado might be pulling this one out. Yeah, I mean, right now it's really in the top deck mode, and I, I feel like, again, Chalice just kind of has some really good top decks. Oh, well, that's... I don't like that. Top decks. I know, I don't like that at all. Hulkbuster no, well, you know knows, yeah. yeah. I, I thought it was a good top deck, but not playing it. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't have slammed it out there. Yeah. That, that I don't agree with. I, 
Yeah, and, and drawing and it was good. Playing it immediately was maybe not as much. Yeah, especially when you have the Omen of Austerities on your Omen of Austerities on Paladin Oath book. So like you, that's that's eliminated as a top deck option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now Wait. yeah, this Desert Marshal can silence the flyer. Ooh. Oh, oh, okay. preventing. Because, yeah, yeah. Worried about uh, Zen and Obelisk actually getting through the five five because right now, if Zen and Obelisk came down when they had eight power, then you'd see everything but just be able to swing in. Still, just a trade at that point. Uh, it, not if they were at eight power. At eight power, they would have had two six sixes. Yeah, but I'm I'm just like. I kind of would have liked to just get a, an attack for five in, but I guess like eh, maybe that's that's probably bad too. So eh, all right, all right. When you when you have chalice, I think that you just want to sit back, relax, wait wait for your opponent to have to that's, swing in and kill yeah, you. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair. Ch chalice is all about kicking up its feet, drinking a margarita, and waiting for your opponent to try and kill you. You, you don't you do not mind uh, you do not mind just sitting and taking a defensive roll here. Five damage is cool and all, but when your opponent's at 26, you're at eight, you, you gotta play a little defensive. All right. Oh, oh, oh wow. Man. K Kamado had to, like, so Hulkbuster had to fade two draws there. This is uh, just a roller coaster of emotion. Yeah. Like, just constant top decks from both sides. Wow. Like, the Reinarch was a great a answer to the board here, and then it immediately hits that uh, Lunark Defender, and now we've got the Temple Scribe to go with Chalice again. I'm gonna be a it's gonna Oof. be really tough for Hulkbuster to pull it out now. Like T Chalice top decks well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Ooh. I think this is. I think this is Kamado's game now. It, it's it, definitely becoming a commanding position, and that's. I mean, it's what Chalice does, right? It it gets into these board states and then just slowly gains value until you're crushed. And that's why yeah. you don't mind just sitting back. We we have this three Very seven true. deadly creature. There's really not much that's going to be able to bust through that. Yeah, I mean, like, I think as soon as I saw that, I, I was willing, I was willing to give Hulkbuster a shot, but this Chalice, I or the, excuse me, the channel off the top this last turn, I think is what is going to clench that. Also, mm -hmm. Kamado can just start swinging in for five in the air. There's another Vanquish, another harsh roll. Yeah, at this yeah. point you start swinging. So yeah. busting Hulks, but not Chalices, unfortunately. All right, well, congratulations to Kamado getting with the, with the comeback. Losing round or the game one, but uh, picking up the two sideboard games. Congratulations, congratulations! So I think we're we're gonna check really quick, see if we have a backup. That match lasted a little bit long, so I don't know if we will. Yeah, no backup. So that was the that was one of the last matches in the round. But before we cut to break, do you, uh, Ilion? You know you know anything about this this Eternal Tournament series? Well, I we have a really cool thing here going on. As you can tell, I'm sure everybody knows what the Eternal Tournament series is. If you wouldn't be here, but uh, on Saturdays, wow. there's Just a shoot shoot it down. That's fine. You know, I had these fun like witty comments of back and forth that we can do. And no, you just take it serious, Ilion. I I don't know. I don't know how this is. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to have a talk off stream. That's all I'm saying. We've got the the wonderful <laughs> Eternal Tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, it. We we got a we got a wonderful new sponsor for the Eternal Tournament series now. So uh, every single uh, week for most weekends on Saturdays we have the Eternal Tournament series, which obviously we're watching right now, and uh, it's we're doing the. <laughs> You're just killing me here, man. You're killing me. <laughs> just gotta mute me, all right? If you don't want to hear me chuckling at your funny jokes, it's a compliment. It's a compliment. <laughs> Come on, Elion. So the Eternal Tournament series runs on Saturdays on the weekends. You can sign up uh, just coming in on in the mornings. We also uh, are running the there's a player draft series that was coming up uh, that happened recently. So where the players were actually being drafted by uh, into different teams. So they weren't drafting the cards, but the players themselves were being drafted. So there's all kinds of really cool tournaments that go on on the ETS all the time. You can follow, find it here at twitch.tv slash RNG Eternal. And... <laughs> <laughs> You're just killing me, man. Uh, we'll uh, be back here in just a minute, I think, with round three. So we're kind of well, setting that up currently. All right. Well, now, now, just just in case, though, if somebody wasn't familiar with the entire Eternal Tournament series and they're just tuning in, there are yes. four seasons throughout the year. 
All right. Each one of those seasons has a number of weeks in there. All of these tournaments, they happen on Saturday, every Saturday to be exact, or almost every Saturday. Every Saturday would be kind of a misnomer, but they're free to play. So definitely, you know, if you if you want to uh, just try to dip your toes in what a competitive scene would be for either Eternal or, you know, even another card game like Magic, Hearthstone, whatever your preferred tournament uh, game of choice is, it's fun, a low, uh, low barrier. If you win, you're going to get a mouse pad and you're going to get an invitational Two are uh, or you're going to get an invitation to our invitationals, which happen at the end of each season. So it's about every two and a half months. There is a cash prize pool for those bad boys of at least two hundred and fifty dollars going out to the top eight. The in uh, the next invitational is on the June second to the third. So make sure you're paying attention for that. Get into these e these weekly tournaments. Try to win or just try to do well because every time you do well, you're getting points. Right? Actually, I think every time you play, you're going to be getting some points, and you can get an invitation to the invitational when you uh, you know if you're in the top in terms of points. So yeah, and now then, and you get those that sweet yeah. year now too every weekend too, right? Yeah, you can you can get up the custom mouse pads so. Got, yeah. a, got a wonderful new sponsor. Lots of cool stuff that you can get. Yeah, And it's easy and it, to enter, like you said. You just have to show up on Saturday mornings, and uh, you can go to twitch.tv slash RNG Eternal, and they have, uh, there's all the stuff on rngeternal.com that tells you how to sign up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really, really when, simple. Yeah, and if you do well at those invitationals, then you get to go to those the annual championships, and that's got a $3,000 prize pool. So we actually do give out real money and mouse pads. For a free tournament. Good. Yeah, for a free. It's 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 a good deal. Everybody Zero uh, barrier. Yeah, yeah. Get in here, all right? And as as Ileon was saying, uh, check out that rngeternal.com for, you know, for a little bit more tournament info. Now, now I would say we're we're done, Ileon. Okay? <laughs> now we're ready to go. Now all we're right, ready to go. Me. Jeez. So now we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back for round three. Uh, hope everybody's enjoying themselves. I know we certainly are, and we'll see you guys soon. <laughs> 